What up, what up, what up, what up, Psy fam? It's your boy, Nickel, and today we're gonna talk about DNA structure. So let's learn about how DNA fits inside of our cells and how it holds our genetic information. So go ahead and title your page, DNA structure, and uh, let's dive on in. All right, so DNA can be found in a cell's nucleus, and if you were to zoom on into the nucleus and see it, you would see a double-stranded molecule that twists, forming a structure that we call a double helix. It's actually what Watson and Crick um, discovered, is that it was a double helix formation. And then Rosalind Franklin actually um, took pictures to understand the helix part of it, that it was a helical structure, but it's Watson and Crick who finally we were able to put the structure together and determine that it was a double helix. So if I were to draw that, um, the way I like to draw that is just kind of drawing a wave type line and then doing an opposite wave like line. And each of these two strands then is joined together by these things that we're gonna talk about next that are called base pairs. So it's kind of like two arms reaching out to find each other and so drawing a DNA molecule is going to look something like this. And a lot of times we just draw a straight line across to symbolize the two different bases that are coming together. And what do I mean by two different bases? Well, in a DNA molecule, um, when it's built and when we add new pieces onto it here, there are four different base pairs that connect those two strands together. So there's four choices of what these lines that I drew connecting these. There could be a letter over here and then another letter over here that they connect together. They find each other. Um, and so these four different bases are adenine, which we just use abbreviation A. We have guanine, which we just use the abbreviation G. Thymine, we use the abbreviation T, and finally cytosine, which we use the abbreviation C. So if one strand of D if we know one strand of DNA, I always like to draw five prime because when we look at a DNA molecule, we have to know how to read it. Um, and the way that we read it is we read it from the five side to whoa to the three side. And so what that means is as we go from the five side of this molecule to the three prime side of the molecule, we're gonna read those base pairs. And so let's say we could zoom into this DNA molecule and we saw that we had an A adenine, a G guanine, a C cytosine, a C cytosine, an A adenine, and a T thymine as our DNA sequence. Well, since it's a double-stranded molecule, the other strand is going to match up in a very particular way. Um, and the other strand is actually gonna go in the opposite direction. So it's gonna go this direction. Now T always pairs up with the exact same letter. So if we know one strand, we can actually decode what the other strand is gonna be. T always joins with A. So if A and T join, then I know that the next letter is T. Well C and G join, cytosine and guanine join. So cytosine and guanine will join for those two. Guanine will join with cytosine, adenine will join with thymine, and that ends our DNA molecule. So here are the two strands, and if we know one strand, we can always determine the other, because what we know here is that A, and make sure you write this part in here, is that A creates a special type of bond with T, and C makes a special type of bond, which is a little bit different, that's why I'm drawing those two different shapes there, with guanine or G. And so this is how um, we know we can figure out what each strand is, even if we only know one of the strands. Adenine and thynine, cytosine and guanine paired together. All right, well, if this DNA is in the double helix shape, um, if it were just plopped into the middle of our cell and not organized, it would be a, a really, really messy situation. If you've ever had a long string, you know how easy it is for it to get tangled. So most of the time, 
DNA is organized by being twisted around these things that we call histone proteins. They're basically just these spheres that wrap up the DNA strands and it forms a thread like structure and this thread like structure is called chromatin. All right, it's almost like a chromosome, but it's chromatin. Chromatin, if we think about this DNA molecule here, if we were to draw a DNA molecule in the double helix shape, well, histone proteins, let me get a different color to show what they look like here. So if I were to draw a histone protein here and here and here, essentially what ends up happening is that the DNA is wrapped around these histone proteins multiple times. And by doing that, it helps organize the DNA so that the DNA doesn't get twisted because if it got twisted, then the cell would not be able to read it and it wouldn't know what to do. So chromatin ends up, if we could zoom in, it's all of these types of uh, proteins, these histone proteins that wrap the DNA up. But if we zoomed out a bit, chromatin would just look like a line of, um, of DNA material. But if we zoomed in, this is what it would look like. These giant spheres of histone proteins wrapping the DNA. We'll have another visual of that on our next science notebook page. Stay on the edge of your seat as you wait for that one. Coming out to a theater near you soon. Anyway, uh, before a cell goes through either mitosis or meiosis, remember there's a two cell division processes, before that cell divides, the DNA chromatin, remember that chromatin, that stuff I just talked about? That's like the thread-like structure of DNA. The DNA chromatin actually coils up even further to organize into the structure, a new structure, the structure of a chromosome. All right, so chromatin makes a chromosome. So what we could say is DNA is coiled into chromatin and chromatin coils into creating a chromosome. So it's just a highly, highly organized structure of DNA. Let me put a box around that to kind of separate it, but it is important to know where our vocabulary and how our vocabulary relate to one another. So as a reminder, mitosis is when our cells are going to either uh, grow new cells or repair our tissues, and meiosis is used to make gametes. Remember egg and sperm? So before our body heals and grows and repairs or creates gametes, our DNA is going to wrap up into an organized structure called the chromosome so that mitosis and meiosis can occur. So when we draw mitosis and meiosis, we're drawing chromosomes. And so essentially what happens is you end up with this thing that kind of looks like a sausage. Um, and this is a chromosome. But when we go through mitosis and meiosis, we need to make a copy of it so each cell gets a copy of the DNA. And so what we find is that there's an exact copy of each other. And in order to keep them together, they're connected by this central piece here. And so let me describe to you the portions here of a chromosome. So the first thing is to know is that the ends of the chromosome, the very tips are called telomeres. And these are uh, protective caps that help protect the chromosome. Um, and as you age, the telomeres actually shorten, which means that your DNA gets a little messed up and that's part of what causes aging. But essentially telomeres or telomeres, telomeres are the ends of the chromosome. And this middle structure here, this is something that we call the centro because it's in the middle, the centromere. And the centromere is going to link the pair of sisters. But they're not just sisters, we call them sister chromatids. So you can see this prefix chrome, chrome, 
chrome and all these words meaning it's just a form of DNA. And so when I mean, when I say sister chromatids, well, this would be one sister chromatid and that would be a second sister chromatid. And so um, let's define sister chromatid as well. So sister chromatids, remember since it has that chrome, it means that it's, part, it's DNA, it's made of DNA. So these are basically DNA sausages here, uh, or whatever you wanna call them. Sister chromatids are exact copies of each other. Um, and so if there's a gene on one of these chromosomes over here, these sister chromatids, then that gene would also be found on the other sister chromatid. And if there were a gene over here on this sister chromatid, then we'd expect to find the same gene on this sister chromatid as well. And so um, this is the main structure of a chromosome, where you have your telomeres, the tips, the ends, on both ends. The centromere is what holds these two sister chromatids together, and each part of this thing is basically an exact copy of each other. Now another version of a way that people will draw these is that they'll, they won't draw the centromere, but they'll draw it looking like an X. But essentially what that means is that there's a centromere in the middle, and then we have two sister chromatids on the side. Well, this is a great introduction to the DNA structure, but it's not the whole story. So let's zoom into a cell and get a better picture of what it looks like. And I'll see you on the next Science Notebook page as we look at that intercellular DNA dynamical structure. See you there. Out.